situational analysis. A cognitive case conceptualization of insight you must begin with a thorough assessment of the situations, experiences and cues that trigger insight. The cognitive therapist could begin at the most general level by asking about the problems or difficulties that led to a decision to seek treatment. With the anxiety disorders, the development of a problem list will inevitably lead into a discussion of the situations that trigger anxiety. Three types of situations should be assessed. Environmental triggers. Information on the external or internal cues, situations or experiences that trigger a state of fear or anxiety is a critical part of an evidence-based assessment strategy for the anxiety disorders. It is important that the cognitive therapist obtain a comprehensive list of anxiety provoking situations with sufficient detail to fully understand the specific cues that trigger an anxious response. In practically all cases, objects, events or situations in the external environment can be identified that trigger anxiety. Examples of anxiety eliciting situations include a variety of social settings or interactions in social phobia in GAD daily events involving some degree of uncertainty or possibly of negative outcome, for example, going on a trip, scheduling an appointment, paying bills, or in OCD situations that elicit fear of contamination or that would be permanent, like washroom sitting on a park bench. Since a comprehensive knowledge of anxiety eliciting situations is critical to case formulation, treatment planning and later exposure interventions, the therapist should complete a broad list of triggering situations that range from the mild to most severe anxiety arousing triggers. The cognitive therapist can obtain initial information on environmental triggers from the clinical review by asking specific questions about the types of situations that elicit anxiety. However, most anxious clients have selective and inaccurate recall of their anxiety provoking situations, so daily self-recording forms should be assigned in the early phase of treatment. In some cases where there has been a long history of avoidance or where the client's self-report may be unreliable, it may be necessary to interview a spouse, close friend or family member to obtain more complete information on provoking situations. The therapist should accompany the client to particular situations or set a homework assignment that involves exposure to a situation in question in order to assist its anxiety eliciting properties. However, this might be too threatening for many anxious individuals, especially in the early phase of treatment. Interoceptive triggers. Most anxious individuals have a heightened awareness and responsiveness to the bodily sensations that characterize physiological hyperarousal in anxiety. Physiological sensations such as increased heart rate, feeling warm, lightheadedness, weakness, tension and the like can themselves become triggers for elevated anxiousness. Thus, it is important to determine if there are any particular bodily sensations that make clients feel more anxious. Although interoceptive cues to anxiety are particularly evident in panic, they will be present in all of the anxiety disorders. For example, a person with social phobia might become even more anxious in a social setting if she begins to feel warm because this is interpreted as a sign of increased anxiety that might be noticed by others. The therapist should include questions in the clinical interview about interoceptive cues, but many clients have even less insight into the presence of physical triggers to anxiety than they do to external cues. A self-monitoring checklist of physical sensations can be assigned as homework in order to gather more accurate information to interoceptive triggers. An interoceptive exposure test is another useful strategy for assessing the physical triggers of anxiety. Taylor describes a number of exercises that can be used in a therapy session to induce physical sensations. For example, the client can be asked to breathe through a straw or jump onto the spot to induce chest tightness, to tense muscles to induce trembling, shaking or to face a heat or feel bodily sensations of warmth. Although the intentional induction of such sensations cannot be equated with the spontaneous occurrence of these situations in vivo, they give the therapist an opportunity to directly observe the client's reaction to the sensations. Cognitive Triggers Unwanted and disturbing intrusive thoughts, images or impulses are an example of a cognition that can trigger anxiety. Practically everyone experiences unwanted mental intuitions and are commonly found in all the anxiety disorders. 
first described by Rahman within the context of OCD, unwanted intrusive thoughts, images or impulses are any distinct identifiable cognitive event that is unwanted, unintended and recurrent. It interrupts the flow of thought, interferes in past performance, is associated with negative effect and is difficult to control. Some examples of common intuitions are unprovoked doubt about locking door when I know I did, touching something gross and dirty that is lying on the street, saying an insulting or embarrassing remark for no apparent reason, blurting out an obscenity in a public meeting, swerving your car into oncoming traffic and the like. Unwanted intrusions are very common in OCD as obsessions and in PTSD as sudden recollections of a past trauma. However, they can also occur in GAD as a negative consequence of excessive worry or as unwanted cognitions in the pre-sleep phase of individuals suffering from insomnia. Unwanted intuitions often involve the theme of losing control that leads to a dreaded negative consequence.